neighborhoods on the Big Island of Hawaii are being advised to evacuate as the ongoing eruption in Kilauea volcano's east right zone spreads and lava flows grow more swift. The Hawaii County Civil Defense Authority sent out an alert on Wednesday evening urging residents of two subdivisions in the Kapoho area on the island's southeastern corner to evacuate as lava threatens to cut off road access to the beach community. Lava began to erupt out of fissures in the area four weeks ago and has since flowed multiple miles to the ocean on the southern side of the island where it creates a dangerous steam called lace that is laced with hydrochloric acid and fine glass particles. Over two dozen fissures have erupted this month and some flows have seen an increase in activity and speed with two new fronts rolling downhill to the east, threatening Kapoho. Lava flows in the area have already knocked out power to the newly threatened neighborhoods. The eruptions have destroyed a significant portion of the Lalani Estates subdivision, which is now subject to a mandatory curfew. Residents with approved credentials are only allowed to enter the area between 7 morning and 6 afternoon. Dramatic footage from the U.S. Geological Survey below shows found turning lava from Fisher 8 in Lalani Estates. The Hawaiian Volcano Observatory reports that the fountain reaches heights of 200 feet and a chilled rock falls like rain in Lalani Estates subdivision. U.S. Geological Survey scientist Wendy Stavall says that the lava now making its way to the surface is the hottest seen so far in the current eruption, allowing it to flow more swiftly. She says it's about as hot as lava can get in Hawaii. We are pretty much tapping mantle temperatures right now, she said. It's unclear how much longer the eruption could continue. Good morning, everyone. Uh, the activity at Kilauea Volcano still remains high at the summit and lower east rift zone. In the lower east rift zone, fissure 8 is still producing very high fountains and lava flows that are moving uh, away from the vent towards the northeast. The flow yesterday crossed Highway 132, continued to travel along the highway, and then um, jumped over to the north uh, just above Noni Farms Road. It is currently about 2.8 miles from the Four Corners Junction area, moving down slope. Overnight, it had speeds up to 600 yards per hour. Uh, there's a, another flow from Fissure 18 that's moving rapidly down slope, and that one is um, headed towards the ocean. Perhaps we'll make another ocean entry. And right now, it's two thirds of a mile from Highway 137 uh, above the Warm Ponds area. At the summit, uh, Overnight, two nights ago, there was a very large explosion from the summit that sent ash up to 15,000 feet above sea level. And that was also registered, um, that explosion was registered as an earthquake that people may have felt, um, but it was not an earthquake. It was an actually an explosion from the summit that created a pressure wave. Um, that's the update for today. Army National Guard soldiers are teaming up with civilian first responders as they monitor air levels around areas impacted by lava. The soldiers from the 93rd WMD CST are checking for any hazardous air conditions as they patrol Hawaii County. We want to make sure that basically it's safety for the civilians as well as the first responders. We want to ensure that you know at any time, at any time they're working or they're just going about their lives, that that designated area safe. Some of the areas they are monitoring include possible evacuation sites and landing zones for first responders. But not only is it the air that they're testing, but the threat of acid rain as well. With the lava reaching the ocean, the chemicals in the fumes can rise and combine with the falling rain. That can make the rain itself acidic and dangerous. So with that in mind, that's why we do paper tests. We use these pH acid level tests um, that will help you determine that gives you a key indicator. Not only does it help with um, giving us uh, the, the pH levels of it, but it also lets us know if our equipment, our detection equipment, is safe because they're also uh, susceptible to being damaged by that rain. The 93rd CST supporting the Hawaii County mission include airmen from the Hawaii Air National Guard as well as soldiers from other states. For California Army National Guard Soldier Staff Sergeant Afonso Anaya, this mission is definitely an eye-opener. 
it's a good and bad experience. I mean, good experience as far as knowing my job better. This helped me prepare for, for in situations that might happen in the future in California. And then the bad, just seeing the destruction of people's homes. For the Hawaii Army National Guard soldiers, they take this mission to heart as this threat not only impacts them, but their state and family as well. Anything involved, you know, within within our state, you know, I take a lot of pride in that, and that's why I'm here. That's why I do my job. It's because you know I, I believe that this is my calling in terms of helping um, everybody at home.